Right, let's see what awaits us. I haven't played Isaac since last Tuesday, I think. And also, there was no upload today on YouTube. Well, today is going to be yesterday. So YouTube is going to be seeing this tomorrow for us watching live. Hello, Trivi. Random, almost random, random. That would have been fun. Alright, what I need is Isaac. Let's see, we need both the new endings, we need Delirium, we need Mega Save. And uh, Greed Mode, but nobody cares about Greed Mode. Okay, let's go for the Beast. I think I already tried that recently and did not quite make it, but whatever, let's try it again. I like the Beast route. See, I had a feeling either Crispy or Valinar would, because if I mention things like that, they're usually the ones to do it, and that means that I don't have to do it, so I did it on purpose so that I wouldn't actually have to do it myself and they have fallen into my trap by being too efficient. Now I will quickly go to Discord and save a version of it before he deletes it in rebellion of what I just said. And let's call that potfriend.jpg. There we go. <laughs> Your efficiency is predictable, and that makes you weak. And Crispy's got an excuse for not being here, I suppose, because he's got a, a zero-year-old. It's always funny to me when people get very annoyed that new parents list their baby's age in months. It's like, what the hell do you expect them to do? Yes, this is my zero-year-old. Oh, how long have you had it? I've had it for zero years now. They're zero years old. Look how I look. Oh, incidentally, I'm not connected to what I was just saying at all, but while I'm remembering, if you could check... Oh, you're never going to check anything for me now after what I said. You know what, I'll just remind myself. Chat, just remind me when it hits the hour in three minutes to go check if a certain Kickstarter has gone live. I want to dissect it. Not meanly, I just want to dissect it. I have a, it may not be going live in three minutes instantly. I'm kind of surprised it isn't live yet because it's based in France and they're an hour ahead. This is just one of those rooms that's very hard to do without getting hit. You just kind of have to either wait until the doors open or accept you're going to take damage. Or the Mullaboom could... Oh, sorry, did I just use his real name? The Mewehe could just suicide randomly. That, that also helps. Which one? Season 3 of Gotham City Chronicles. A game so complex that the revised rulebook, the how to play video using the revised rulebook by the person who wrote the rulebook, is over 3 hours long. It took them 40 something minutes to get to the halfway through the first action of the first turn with the first character. And that is not a joke. I watched it on my day off and I was making fun of it in Discord. Now, it is not the person who rewrote the rules' fault. They have made it more concise. Well, no, they haven't made it more concise. They made it clearer. The problem is the rule set itself is overly complex and bad for what could have been a really decent game. Like, I played it a little bit. I've got some videos of it up. It's okay, but it's so overly complex for what it is. I think they desperately wanted a, a chess game, almost. And that's not really what you need. Ooh. Did you see that, Zach? These are pretty nice. Thank you, Zero, for a resubbing as well with your Twitch Prime. Welcome back. So that does not take up a space because it's a space prime, which technically is a space, but, you know. I know it still says coming to. Oh, wait, it has hit the hour, hasn't it? Okay. It is meant to be launching today. I, I looked at the response to the 3 hour 20 something minute how to video. Now granted it's not literally like just how to play, they play a, a mission in it. But it should not be that complex and you could tell at points they were struggling to make it sound simple. Because it's not simple. It's And that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad either because there's, there's complicated board games that are fun. Like, Nemesis is ridiculously complex for what it is, but it, even if you get some of the rules wrong or forget some of the stuff, it's still very fun to play. 
and it doesn't feel tedious and it doesn't have a 60 page rulebook that's literally 90% flowcharts. Incidentally, the new version of the rules kept the flowcharts and they justified it by them being clear, which they aren't. But hey, at least there's there's player aids now which we're missing from the game as well. Quick references to. That's why I'm interested in the Season 3 Kickstarter. I want the... Take that. The player aids and character skill list. Like Gotham City Chronicles itself does a thing that a lot of Kickstarter miniature games do, and that's rely too heavily on iconography. And what that means is... Well, it's kind of like Isaac, actually. You know how Isaac, like, the D quarters of the items when you pick them up, it doesn't tell you what it does, it vaguely alludes to what it does. Icons on, like, stat cards or character profiles in miniature games are kind of that way as well. Where you've, you've been given a hint of the information and you're expected to either remember what it stands for or you have to go look it up. The reason that's done is cheapness. Because if there's a... well, and tidiness, I guess you could argue. I mean, a lot of icons in a card looks a lot nicer than a lot of words. But if you have, a like, one big glossary and then tons and tons and tons and tons of pictures. All you need is one page translated and that's the one that explains what the pictures mean. You don't have to translate all the cards into every language that your game is covering. So that's why they do it. I'll have Spider who lives in face. So that means if we get hit it's going to bounce around but in the meantime we get occasional quad shot. And we've become Lord of Spiders. I think if they'd known how popular the game would have been, they would not have relied so heavily on iconography to get around translation prices. Hello, EVP. That was very polite of you to say hello to the spider that lives in my face. He'll visit you soon. I was just talking about the problems with Gotham City Chronicles in time for its Season 3 trailer, not trailer, Kickstarter to launch. They Did messed up with the second season as well, they focused on a versus mode that nobody wanted. <laughs> this season is adding a solo cooperative mode, which sounds like they're adding a bunch of, like, AI cards, which is not needed. Hey, thank you Luke for using your Twitch Prime as well. Bye weep grand and weep ninny ball. That is the universal mm. greeting of peace. Mm. For those who don't know, because you're not giant nerds. Mm. Oh! Thank you, Ride Dog, for the bits. It's from the Transformers movie. You made me forget what I was saying. What? What is that icon? What is that? Watching without audio. How are you watching without audio if you know what I said? How does that make any sense? Also, why would Twitch tell me that? Oh, do you not see it? Is that a mod thing? Like, there's an icon next to Dunko Prince's name. And when I hovered over it, it let me know that he's watching without sound? Oh, you do see it. Okay. But how is that true if you heard what I said? Oh, unless you just happened to say it by chance and didn't hear what I was talking about earlier, I suppose. In which case, there's no point in me saying this because you can't hear me. That, that's real confusing. It's an elective badge, so someone can assign it and be lying. Okay. Why would Twitch let you do that? It's so stupid. Why would Twitch electively let you lie for no reason? That's that's very strange. I've utterly forgot what I was talking about now as well. Do I have to speak up and wearing a towel? Oh, I, I would like it if I could customise what it says. Like instead of just saying user listening or not listening with audio, if I could just change the text so it says speak up, they're wearing a towel, I would love it. That would be amazing. HP or HP, that just means we can get rid of it afterwards, that's fine. Revel in death. 
Rage. Now there's an interesting item that I want. Hey, the spider who lives in my face now has a little headband. It's cute. Wait, you can also set it so you're not watching? Oh right, thank you for reminding me, but hang on, yeah. So you can also electively make it known that you're watching without video. You know what, that one's not so bad. Because if you're only listening, you might not have context. And then if you ask for context, it doesn't come across like you've not been just paying attention, like there's a reason. So yeah, yeah, the new season of Gotham City Chronicles is adding an AI mode, which is... They've made it sound like there's a shit ton of AI cards they're making. Which is so utterly unnecessary. <laughs> like, I played the game solo. You just play the villain like the best option to try and win. It's not difficult. If you want to add randomization to what the villain is doing, just roll a dice. Like, you don't need a complex AI system, but I feel like whoever made this game just really likes complex systems. And that is not conducive of having a good time. <laughs> Always. Sometimes, like, Nemesis is the exception. Nemesis is an overly complicated game. But just because of how fun it is, despite it also being so <laughs> very unfair sometimes, is fun. Speaking of which, there'll be a new Nemesis video live today if you're watching on YouTube, tomorrow if you're watching live. I think I'll be recording another one soon as well because I wanted to record one more before tidying it away again because it's a little bit of a hassle to set up. That's the other thing about Nemesis. The tabletop simulator version is so much better because it's all scripted so you don't need to do any of that stuff. What would be the plural of Nemesis? Nemesi. I guess you would just go to rivals, more than one rival. Well, the Nemesis is more enemy, isn't it? The board game is only called Nemesis because that's the name of the ship. It's not even like the name of the aliens. The aliens are just called intruders. Well, the default aliens, the, the xenomorph ripoffs are called intruders. Well, uh, my point isn't that complex systems are all bad, is what I'm saying. That's why I'm bringing up Nemesis, because as complicated it is, is it's, it's very fun. Gotham City Chronicles is overly complicated and doesn't need to be. What I liked, I, again, I don't mean to keep on ragging on the, the guy who rewrote the rule books how to play video, his, his 3 hour 20 minute video on how to play a game. Um, but they introduced a new rule to make it easier for the heroes because the game is fundamentally imbalanced in the villain's favour. So they start using one of the new rules to make it easier for the heroes, but then when they decide, oh hang on, it looks like we're going to win too easily now, which I don't really think they were, but hey, they decided to stop using that and go back to the base rules, and then they lost again. And they said they did a practice game where they lost, and they kind of just try and downplay it, but it's clear the problem is just the core rules. It's not in the hero's favour and you it's not just like they said, oh if you're a new player it's very hard to win as the heroes. Bullshit! <laughs> it's very hard to win as the heroes because the rules are fundamentally imbalanced in the villain's favour. The, the time constraints in the game are too strict for a game involving a lot of chance. That's the other thing in Nemesis, yeah you're rolling a dice occasionally but you can control the randomization in Nemesis. Like, you can carefully move, so you're not doing, like, a full chance roll every time you move into a room. There's strategies. In Gotham City Chronicles, you're just, you're rolling dice for everything, and most of the dice are, are like, 50-50 chance or worse of getting a success. Hello, Ty, you just got the PS5 version... Wait, you just got a PS5 disc version on your walk today. Oh, sorry, you got a PS5 disc version. Right, okay, I'm with you now. Congratulations on finally being able to track one down. As I look at the dust gathering on the one I've had for over a year. Oh yeah, and Ty did also redeem the Barkening to celebrate, so feel free to spam sorrow related emotes if you want.
No, that's not true. I did have, I have had my PS5 on recently. We're playing Fortnite on it, and we're playing Arkham Knight on it, although it's a PS4 game. It does have dust on it, though. My room is dusty. And I do dust. But mostly I've been hoovering recently because Sora is shedding hair in every which way. And every time I think I've cleared a, a tabletop table of her hair, I'll notice mid-filming that there's actually been some there the whole time and been here all along. And then I'll look at the photos I've taken to use as thumbnails and just have a moment where I'm like, Jesus Christ, and there's like hairs all over the damn miniatures that I didn't see at the time. It's like, how can one little dog have so much fur? Well, I guess she doesn't anymore because she's shedding to her summer coat, but still. She's... The, no, bleh, the amount of times I've hoovered in the last two weeks. And I still need to do it more. Oh, Court, your cat is 90% fur. That doesn't count. Sora is fluffy, but she ain't that fluffy. So watching the Evil Dead game. Yeah, it's it's kind of like the Dead by Daylight type setup, yeah. And it's not very good by all accounts. Well, not all accounts, but by review accounts. Do I brush her? Yes, she actually likes getting brushed. If she sees me grab the brush when I'm in the kitchen, she'll come over and like lean against me. And yes, I do that, and yes, it collects a lot of hair, but it just multiplies. I think she's got like six or seven shadow clones hiding around the house that are also shedding. It's the only f way the physics makes sense. She likes getting her side brushed. She doesn't like getting her, like, her hind. I don't want to say butt because Chad will be weird about it. Her hind legs brushed. She sometimes gets a little annoyed with that. But that's where the hair collects. That's where all the loose hair is. Oh, it's live. Oh, that's difficult because I know YouTube won't give a shit about me pausing to look at a Kickstarter. I just want to look at the miniatures and then make fun of it for another 10 minutes. The miniatures are good quality, for the record. The miniatures are really good quality. I, I enjoyed painting the ones I painted. They're like halfway between the realistic Night Models ones and like fully cartoony. I mean, I'm just going to take a quick look, I promise. It's just, uh, the run is going very well. We're, we're ahead of schedule. It's fine. How much are they won? 170,000 in British pounds. Oh yeah, they're also doing a D&D &D Batman game at the same time as part of this. So that's how they're hoping to draw up a little bit more attention. The D&D stuff is £55, the Bat Family, which is all the D&D stuff, including a screen. The drawing on the screen is pretty cool, I'll be uh, fair to that, that's a very neat looking drawing. That's 150 quid, and that's what, an adventure book, city guide, and then the core rules for doing like a D&D &D Batman campaign. And then you've got the old Season 1 stuff for Gotham City Chronicles, that's 125 all in season three. Oh, so this is everything they've added for season three. So this would be this would be the stuff I'm interested in. Gotham City in Flames, a new Eden, the solo co-op mode box. It doesn't need its own box. This is ridiculous. And back computer files. Oh, that'll be the quick references and stuff. I'm very curious how much they're charging for that. And you get a free anarchy model. Okay, how much is that? 119 quid. Oh, plus exclusive miniature Batman Who Laughs. I was I should have said this before I looked at this. I was going to say I bet the Batman Who Laughs is in this season, and I bet he's paywalled. And he bloody is. And then there's what? What is Riddler? Uh, that's D&D &D plus season one. Okay, and then you get the Batman Who Laughs there as well. Stretch goals. They're not saying any stretch goals yet, but there is some. Quick start guide. Core... Where is just the season three stuff? I just want to know how much that is. They're not even showing the full Batman Who Laughs miniature. I want to know what it looks like. 
Uh, let's see, you get four new hero miniatures. That's Batgirl. Oh, it's Cassandra Kane, Batgirl. I'm sorry, YouTube. Jace Fox, Batman. I've got no idea who that is. Ghostmaker, I know who he is, and that's the newer version of Red Hood. I know who that is. Cheshire, Merlin, and Punchline as villains, plus two mystery boxes. I don't like that. Generic. Oh, there's penguins with missiles. The new maps look cool. An airship and a boat, I think. And then a mission book. So is this the quick references? Yeah, this is the... Okay, okay so for quick references and the updated rulebook, i.e. the stuff you need to make the existing seasons playable, 25 quid. Not terrible. Not terrible. There's a lot of cards because there's a ton of characters. So there's a lot of... Like, does it tell you how many? Yeah, 86 character sheets. Five map references, four player aids, revised rulebook, which was massive. And then what's in this Poison Ivy campaign? 13 quid, probably not a lot then. Oh, I think that's another way to play as some villains in the same way as heroes play. What's in the solo mode? Yep, they're, they're, uh, they do not need this. There's a solo co-op die, 48 AI cards, 67 supervillain cards, and 63 mission sheets. Not necessary at all. You can play the base game solo. Just use a dice. Or just play the villain like another person. At least they're not charging a lot for the, the, the player aids. I'll probably pick those up at the very least. Oh, is there an example of the co-op cards? I was about to come... This is Valinor's fault. Where, where did I see what a co-op card looks like? Oh, they're on the picture. I can't, I can't beat that. I have old man eyes. Where's a zoomed in version? Link me to a zoomed in version, please. I also just realized there's player aids for all the characters you can play as, which is A, however many I just said. But villains also have skills, and that also needs a quick reference, because otherwise you're just going to have to look at the rulebook to find out what those are anyway. And I don't see any mention, or didn't see any mention, of a villain quick reference. I apologize again, YouTube, for distracting myself for so long, but that's what happens when you run a kickstart half an hour into a stream. But I knew it. I, I should have said it because I knew that they were going to pay while the Batman who laughs. Because he's not. If you want to buy just this, the quick references and stuff, he's not included in that. You've got to go for one of the larger buys. Thankfully, the the existing Batman who laughs, even the older version for the Night Models game, look cool. Hello Phelan, yep, I'm glad you're still very well versed on this game. If you're wondering why I'm getting this shield ever so often, not Phelan obviously, because Phelan knows. It's the uh, trinket I have. If I kill enemies I get a half second shield, and if you kill enemies constantly, the shield stays up. It's pretty good. It's one of the newer trinkets that are actually decent. I did see the small version of the AI card. I, I couldn't make head nor tails of it, but that's because it's a, I'm looking at it in a small window. Where the hell is that item? It is also a Witcher reference, yes. It well, certainly looks like it. Well, actually, no, it looks like it, but no, that's just the satanic symbol. There is no large version. There's no, like, reference to let people see an example. That's a little... suspect. Oh, because the person they paid to rewrite the rulebook to make it, uh, readable. He made it very clear that he has nothing to do with the solo co-op stuff they're doing. That's, that's purely on them. It looks to me like they've used it as an excuse to be able to get some more money out of people. Like, the game did not need even more cards to try and control an AI villain. Don't want either of these. So that was worth looking for, is what I'm saying. The run actually is going good so far. For real. 
We've got a good item that rewards if I get hit. We've got a way to regenerate HP. We've had one damage up. We have a spider that lives in our face. We're going to the beast, which isn't too bad. So yeah, it's, it's going fine. Oh, I missed that earlier. We're getting deals with the devil as well. In fact, we're doubly rewarded if I get hit. Oh, wait, why didn't the spider break out? I got the rage up, but I didn't get the spider. They nerf it so it's not 100% chance if you get hit. I will indeed take the tail of the guppy. We'll probably end up getting rid of it, but my god, we look horrifying. Let me take a look at that picture again. I'm, I'm sorry, I just want to get a little glance. Yeah, those... Oh, look! Sorry, again, I'm going back to it, I know. But, oh, look, the AI cards are just icons. The supervillain cards have writing. The AI cards are just icons. They have learned nothing. Good to know. I would not recommend uh, going all in on that particular Kickstarter. If you went in on one of the previous seasons, get the quick references, it'll make the game playable. If you like some of the miniatures in the new expansion, I mean the the Batgirl looks pretty cool in the Red Hood. It seems okay. But yeah, not the... I, I wouldn't recommend going in. Oh yeah, but the mystery boxes. Yeah, don't don't do mystery boxes in a Kickstarter. <laughs> no, well, not a miniature game anyway. I bet it's unsold season two. They had like a I've forgotten what they called it, like a pick and mix section. It was just a bunch of characters you could use in base campaigns and whatnot. I bet it'd be unsold ones from that. No, it will not have a boat in it. I can assure you, well, I can't assure you of that. It might have a boat in it. Yeah, on second thoughts, you should probably just go all in on it. Now that I've considered the boat. I've seen who's writing the story for Dark Side. I, Dark Tide, sorry. I don't give two shits about the story of Dark Tide. I just want to shoot chaos people in the face. I will shoot to the Chaos Ogrins that look like Nurgle and then feel a little bit bad because they look so cute. No, we don't want that. We will stick with Sigil of Baphomet. Well, presumably they would have miniatures in them, yes. It would be metaphorical crack, not literal crack. Dark Tide doesn't strike me as a, a game that needs a, a good writer. It needs good QA and good gameplay. Been a while since I've done that. And I'm using my new 360 controller, the, the final one I have. So it ain't that that's doing it. It's brand new in today. Put it in earlier. You know, I actually had the opportunity to go play Dark Tide. I, I didn't say anything about uh, don't mention this. If I had been living in LA, I would have been playing it in June. But I don't, so I won't. It's a shame because I would like to play it, but if that means there's some kind of test build, it will hopefully be available to everybody at some point. Maybe the end of June, maybe July, who knows. It's got character customization. Again, I just want to shoot chaos things in the face. It, it's fine. <laughs> Is 
Some games need a good story. Some games don't. I enjoy Vermintide well enough and it doesn't really have a story. Beyond generic Warhammer Fantasy stuff. Well, unless you do the drunk event where they're all out on the piss, that's probably got the most lore in the game. Yeah, I guess the spider coming out your face isn't 100%. I thought it was, it might not have been. We don't really need the steam sail at this point. I'll take the mire though. And the first item on the chopping block will be the HP up because we've already had the benefit. It can't hurt, but I'm not going to pretend to care. not the genre of game that I require to have a good story. I also don't think it will draw in 40k fans who aren't interested in the type of game that Vermintide was, because Dark Tide is the same. Like, are they likely to give it a chance just because that writer is connected? It's not official canon, so it's not going to matter. Not that official canon matters really either. They'll change it as soon as they think up some new units to sell. I thought the Thor trailer looked good. I thought Christian Bale looked very fun as a villain. I haven't seen him in anything since the Nolan trilogy. it ignores the multiverse stuff. Now what happens if I take a ball of bandages and I presumably won't like stack up the one I have? Right, it'll just replace. Uh, it's a shame. I don't really want to get rid of anything for a tier 2. But we could get a tier 3 because I'm using Book of Revelations. Um... Then I would need three spaces just to get tier three. Well, I don't really need Guppy's tail. We're not going to get Guppy. I don't know why I took it. It's fine. Must remember we're going through that door. I wouldn't bother getting into Warhammer lore. It's not worth it. It's not interesting, really. It's It changes based on what they want to sell. And I know that sounds overly cynical, but it's the truth. Games Workshop are, are very... Uh, I think contact damage is maybe what makes it come out. Are very monetarily driven. They also don't pay the writers enough. Kill, kill, yes. To go back to the Thor talk briefly. Looks interesting, I'd happily watch that one. Still not ever gonna go to the cinema to watch it. I'll watch it on Disney Plus. After the official Marvel channel has no doubt spoiled the entire movie for me six months in advance. Quite like the look of the She-Hulk series as well. I'm aware that people are upset that she's not chonky, because She-Hulk is meant to be chonky. I guess it depends on the reason they picked the person that they have playing her, who is not particularly chonky. 
Was she picked because she's the best person for the role or other reasons? Ow. You know, it would have been good for She Hulk before they got cancelled for being like a, a bizarre Republican. The lady who played Cara Dune on the Mandalorian. She would have been an absolutely perfect person to play She Hulk. Sadly, we are left with no other option than whoever the lady is. Also, we're not getting birth right now, which is what I was hoping for. It's also going to be very interesting as to whether or not they explain Scientist Hulk being back for the purposes of the She-Hulk series, and yet not being back in the post credit scene to Shang-Chi. She compared being a Republican to being a Holocaust survivor, which got her cancelled rightfully, yes. And as a result, she killed her career. I guess it is possible it's set before, but that would be a little awkward. She did play Angel in Deadpool. Yeah, in Deadpool 1. That was a long time ago. She got cancelled between Mandalorian Season 1 and 2. Or no, sorry, right after Season 2. Do one that. Um, Demon baby's gonna go. Like when the hell was Deadpool one? Like eight years ago or something? Why did I come in here? Twenty sixteen. All right, not as long as I'm remembering. Although it would have been filmed like twenty fifteen at the earliest. <laughs> oh wait, I need the teleport. That's what I was looking for. I remembered at the last second. Is it through here? here because this is the mom floor I can't tell if that skull in the top left has the no it's not because I'm going to the beast I really need to stop walking into that Temperance. down here yes it is perfect So who is the lady that's playing She-Hulk? Like, would I know her from anything else? It's hard to tell with the green makeup. Or a green CG, which didn't look great, but whatever. Also, there seem to be a lot of scenes like post-She-Hulk transformation where she's back to looking normal. As I understand it, She-Hulk in the comics just chooses to remain in Hulk form because she has full like control of herself and isn't afraid of being green so that's a little weird as well it would also be the perfect series to have another daredevil cameo
Do I need to lose an item space to take one of these? Does this take up a space? It doesn't. Okay, I didn't think it did. Ooh, Guppy's eye. Don't shoot at me. Nope, don't want any of that. I was briefly talking about she hulk because we were talking about the Thor trailer that came out today. It's also worth pointing out that Hulk and she hulks bulkiness changes in comics based on the artist. I've read a few of the Marvel like crossover stories that had she hulk in it and she's different sizes in them. So is Hulk. Has anyone seen, like, it was going around Twitter, like, last year, a picture from early 90s Marvel comic? And the artist got forced to draw all their characters, like, super duper buff, because that was just the in thing at the time. So, like, Reed Richards and, and whatnot were just, like, roided out tough guys. I think it's time to say goodbye to one of the balls of the bandages in order to get some bones. Thank you, Little Jack, for resubbing for a hilarious number and the tier two sub. The CGI did look kind of bad, yeah. Well, you know, Disney are a small company. It's not like they can afford to have movie level quality in their TV shows. Got to save all that cash for the Star Wars stories. I'll change his size on the page sometimes. It is the way of things. There's a shop, but this floor sucks. Let's just go and hope for the best. You watched Doctor Strange 2 yesterday. What did you think of it without spoilers in case people care about that sort of thing? Think faster, I'm waiting for your answer before I move on to new topics of conversation. Uh, no. Thought it was okay. Fair enough. I actually read the full synopsis of it today on Wikipedia. That's not a joke, I really did. Because I was just curious whether or not a character got killed off. That's literally the only reason, because I've watched clips of it before it was released, because it released early in Thailand, so I'd seen all the pivotal scenes. So I was like, eh, I'm, I'll just read the story, that's fine. There's just going to be a bunch of clips of it on the Marvel Channel in a week anyway, so who cares? Although, clearly, whoever wrote the uh, the synopsis on the Wikipedia page did not know their Marvel because they didn't know who it was in the post credit scene. It's like, you fool, how could you not know it was Redacted? Redacted is a evil overlord from the Xanthron planet who once had sex with Thanos in the butt. And he liked it. There were parts you thought were stupid. Welcome to a Sam Raimi film. As all things should be, yes, exactly. I don't even remember Eternal's post credit. Oh, wait, now I do. Wait, wasn't there technically two? 
there was the, well, this is spoilers for our shitty Marvel movies, so, and I mean, I don't mean all Marvel movies are shitty, I like them for the most part. Eternals was shit. <laughs> Uh, the first post credit scene is the Eternals going off into space to have an adventure that would probably never get made at this point. And then there was the scene with Black Knight and Blade. Which I guess He's is fun, so I suppose. And disturbed, just like his father. Look at who he has to look up to. And you're drunk again, aren't you? Shut up, man! Shut up! Unless they get relegated to a TV show. Leave it. Good! Leave! We'll be fine without you! Abandon us like you've abandoned yourself. Tell Maggie to shut up, I'm playing. That does nothing on this floor. It's not Wesley. Well, you don't see Blady talks off camera, but no, it's not Wesley Snipes. I think. Fairly certain. I also didn't know who Black Knight was until the Marvel Zombies Kickstarter campaign. Like, oh, that's that guy. Okay. I only know who it was in the post credit scenes of Doctor, Doctor Strange 2 because of Crisis Protocol. Bad guy from Luke Cage. Which bad guy? The one who played Bushwag? Cottonmouth. Okay, now, um, was that season one? been a while. Copperhead is a Batman villain, yes, the, the lady, the snake lady. Uh, Luke Cage, Cottonmouth. Oh, the club owner guy! He looks a lot more cheesy in the comics based on this search result. All right, yeah, he's got he's got the the stature for it, I would say. Do we know if it's going to be a TV or like oh, a TV, a Disney Plus or a movie? Ooh, that's very lucky. Oh, he's presumably going to play... well, I don't know. He probably wouldn't want to just do a Wesley Snipes impersonation. He'd try and bring his own thing to... It'll be very important that he shares his opinion on people trying to rollerblade up hills. Or roller skate up hills? Whatever the quote was. Spider lives in the faces released. Oh, 
the same actor can play two different characters in the same cinematic universe as long as the portrayals are drastically different. you still have the energy to keep up with this kind of stuff regarding Marvel. Please don't start an actually fight regarding what the first movie was. Where are you going? Where are you going? Wait! We need you! Your son needs you! Hello, Mike Pike! One way or t'other, we're about to finish this run. Then after that, I don't know if I'm going to do another one. We'll see. We're not strong enough to do well in the fight currently, but... Get rage proc in a little bit, then use the algae's on second uh, phase dogma because you get a bunch of bonus stuff when you go down to the beast anyway. I thought this would have been the exit, then be the room to the south. These monsters are taking way too long to die. Actually, don't bother because I don't really have room to take it. Plus one to my lowest stat or rainbow tears. Did you see that, Zack? The ball of bandages is no longer useful. Let's take fruitcake and see how that does for us. Thank you, Oracle M, for using your Twitch Prime as well. Are we almost, we're not quite at the end of the month. Surprising there's so many Twitch Primes ready. Sleeping in bed aloud. Floor only. <clears throat> Neither of these are useful. What's quote unquote worse? The same actor playing two different roles in a cinematic universe or multiple actors playing the same role? I.e. two different people who have played Bruce Banner.
This one took a little longer than I was expecting. I'll use it, but I decide not to use it in this form. So we're doing okay. into another one, never mind. Speed is a little low. Wait, what did we take that lost us 0.02? Oh yeah, I forgot Chris Evans has played two different characters in the MCU. He played uh, the Human Torch in Captain America. Yeah. Should be telling me that the Jessica Alba Fantastic Four movies aren't canon. Have you seen the those? Of course they're canon. Ah, see, there's Lugak lying and spreading fake news as expected. We got a charge though. That edge is running out. Yes. Look at the bone hovering above his head. Spoiler mentioning that there's an actor who played Reed Richards in the cinematic universe. Yeah, I would say so, yeah. And I don't think you're stupid enough to not know that. Please don't spoil it for people who actually care about spoilers. Where is my enemy? Oh, there he is. That might be enough. If he gets damaged by whatever those are on the bottom of the screen that haven't disappeared, that might be helping. I think the spider is down there.
we're gonna get one of these hits back. I don't know what to do with this attack. I've never seen it, but I've seen it like three times. That means we're doing very little damage, which probably means we're not gonna win. Good one penny fell out. Not oh, that changed form. No horn breaks yet, though. Wait, did I lose two hits there? I thought I had two hits left, now I've got one. Ooh, he is looking a little worse for wear, but if one of these randomly fall on me, I'm just done. Oh, I got him! Barely! <laughs> Unlocked Glitched Crown. Oh dear. Well, we got something, so pay out the... If it said unlock, we did it. <laughs>